How well have the car parts that I 3D printed out of PETG held up after two and a half years in the Florida climate? Let's take a look at that. It's now been over three years since I got started in 3D printing and a little over two and a half years since I first 3D printed some car parts. When I got started doing this, I ultimately decided to make things out of the PETG material for a variety of reasons. If you want to see more about that, go back and check out the first video that I made about 3D printing car parts. If you're not familiar with the PET or PET material, that is the material that you will commonly find in clear plastic bottles, soda bottles. Um, it's very common. And the material that you print with is basically the same thing. Um, I think if you want to get real technical, there is a slight difference. The material in the bottles is technically PETE, and the material we print with is PETG. So there's some kind of glycol process that changes it a little bit, but it's essentially the same plastic. And I ended up choosing this material to 3D print car parts with because it's cheap, it's pretty easy to work with, and it's relatively durable. And it can withstand the heat a little bit better here in Florida. If I had printed car parts out of the more common PLA material that most people 3D print with, then they would have warped and gotten destroyed from the heat of the sun in no time at all. So let's take a look at a few of the parts that I've made out of the PETG. So the very first part that I 3D printed was this hood release handle for my Audi A4 here. This one, out of all of the parts that I have made, has been the most protected here, sitting underneath the dash. And then uh, this car is uh, not running right at the moment, so it's been sitting under a car cover as well for at least part of this time. So this part has seen no discoloration. No wear, no weathering, no problems whatsoever. It still opens the hood just fine. And although the replacement piece for this was only like 15 bucks, it was nice to be able to 3D print it for much less than that and have it fix the problem and it still works. So that's been a great one. Here is another small part that has seen no warping or discoloring or any issues whatsoever because it's also up under the dash here protected. This is just a little switch housing that I made and that is for the manual control for the radiator fans here in my S10 Blazer. Now moving on up here to a part that has spent much more time in the elements still inside the car but sitting on the dash here so it's sitting directly in the sun a lot of the time and uh, getting the greenhouse effect as well is this gauge pod. This part has held up pretty well. Uh, I just have it stuck on here with a piece of adhesive tape, which is starting to release a little bit. But uh, I had no problems at all with this for over two years. And then just a couple of months ago this summer, I noticed after a particularly hot day that the top of this did end up warping and distorting a little bit here. But like I said, for the first I don't know, two years that this sat on the dash here, it didn't have any problems whatsoever. Of course, this doesn't affect the ability to hold a gauge. It still does that, no problem. But again, it did, uh, sitting directly in the sunshine here, get a little warped. And then as a comparison here, I printed this gauge pod at the same time as the one that's been sitting on the dash here. I ended up choosing not to use this one for the vacuum gauge here, but this one has been sitting underneath the dash here inside the car for the entire time as well and has had no warping or any other issues whatsoever. And the last part I'm going to look at here has spent 100% of its time outside in the sun for the most part and being exposed to all the weather and the rain and car washes and everything else. So this is the window trim piece that I 3D printed for the S10 Blazer here and and if you've been following the channel, you know that I have been selling quite a few of these as well. These, this has gotten a little bit of discoloration. I'm not sure that it even comes through on the camera there, but it's not quite as black as it started out. It's not really warped though. This part is very thin compared with all the others, so I think this would have warped more significantly, but the entire back of this is a piece of two-sided Gorilla tape and I think that's held that on there tight enough that that's prevented that from warping. So that's that side 
Here is the other side. This one I think gets a little bit more sun, so it is a little bit more discolored. Again, it's hard to tell because the rubber around the window here is also a little bit faded and discolored, being 30 years old. But these parts have held up quite well. I've been very happy with them. So there you have it, short and sweet, a quick rundown on the car parts that I have 3D printed out of PETG. Overall, everything has held up as well as I expected, and I've got no complaints really. I do have a spool of ASA material sitting on my desk, so at some point in the near future here, I am going to try to print some things in ASA as well and see how that compares. But if you're thinking about trying to make some car parts and you're trying to use PETG, Go for it. It's a good choice, and I think for most of the things that you would make, it's going to hold up fairly well. Of course, if you're trying to make something that's going to go in the engine bay or near the exhaust or something like that, then obviously the heat's going to be a problem for you because as I showed with the gauge pod, you can still warp PETG without too much trouble. But that's gonna do it for this video. I will be getting back into some more vehicle content in the very near future. So make sure you subscribe to the channel and check back for that. Give this video a thumbs up and like it if you did. Leave me a comment down below if you've got something to add, and I will see you next time.